Okay. One, two, three. Are we going? One, two, three. Are we going? We are going. We are live. It is happening. It is real. It is on board. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is Pogo Kiro. Oh. Yes, Pogo Kiro. Um, this is my page. And I started it a long time ago to say, like, I am a poet. But, like, I'm kind of past that point now, right? <laughs> because then, uh, suddenly, Donald Trump got elected president. And that changed everything. Suddenly, things were no longer cool. Things were no longer on board. <laughs> Bad things were afoot. And I realized it. But nobody else did. So, you ever hear the story about the, the, about, you know, it's a Dutch story, I guess. It's got to be Dutch. Uh, about the kid who, who uh, saw a hole in, in the dike. Uh, like, okay, because you have to understand that, like, Holland is below sea level. So, the way they keep the ocean from flooding in and, like, flooding all of their land is by big walls. And they call these big walls dikes. <laughs> right. That's what they call it. Um, and, and um, yeah, but, but if, these, if these dikes fail, then, then the ocean rushes in and destroys all the land and drowns all the people, and it's terrible. So it's real important to make sure that the dikes don't fail. Well, the story goes that once upon a time, a little boy was, like, walking along the dikes, and, like, he saw a hole, and he saw water coming out, right? But he was, a, but no one was around. So, like, and he, but he knew if he left and just let the water go, the whole dam would, the whole thing would, 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 would fail. So, so the guy, so the little boy ran up to the, 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 the dike, and he stuck his finger in. And, like, it was cold. <laughs> and, yeah, it was wet and, and stuff. And, like, he felt very alone. But he knew if he left, that thing would collapse and everyone would die. So he did what he had to do, which was hang out for as long as he could. And it, it's, and it seemed like forever. But someone eventually found him and then got help. And then they shored up the... the uh, that part of the wall so it didn't collapse. So, yay! I felt like that kid in 2017 <laughs> because I saw clearly that um, there was some shenanigans going on with the Trump administration. I, I saw it right away. But no one believed me. So I, I had to like lead, I, I had to like carry a secret burden for the longest time until people finally believed me. And even after, even after the, um, uh, the insurrection attempt, <laughs> people, people still don't believe me, but that's because, you know, they're Nazis at that point. I mean, you know, by that point, you know, you know, they're Nazis. But still, that's what's going on, guys. No joke. The reincarnation of all the bad guys have come back and are trying to overthrow the, the world. Like, you think I'm joking? <laughs> you think I'm making this up? No. <laughs> I mean, look at it, right? There's a cabal of very, very rich people who have a vested interest in keeping things the way they are right now. They're like, don't change anything. I'm making a lot of money right now. Don't change anything. Don't change anything. <laughs> the problem is the, things are, the, thing, the way things are right now is real bad for a whole bunch of people. Not include, not notwithstanding the environment, the environment is going to collapse if we keep doing going the way 
um, things are right now. So we have to make a change. We have to. So, yeah, otherwise all life on earth is going to going to die. And the rich people are so full of hubris. Do you know the word hubris? Hubris, it means like arrogance to a divine fault. <laughs> like utter arrogance, hubris, arrogance, like self-confidence, too much self-confidence, like cockiness. Cockiness might be a good way of saying hubris. But it's like just like arrogance that's so bad that it leads to your downfall hubris and these billionaires like elon musk are so full of hubris they believe they can create a, a, a space place or or they can go live on mars or something to get away from the regular people while the, the this world collapses and they get to live on a whole on a whole their own brand brand new world just for the rich people just for themselves like, but that's crazy. That's crazy talk. Because if you cannot create a sustainable environment on Earth, how are you going to make one on, on Mars? <laughs> I mean, this place is made for us. If we can't live here on Earth, how do you think we're going to live on Mars? Like, are you, are you crazy? How do you think we're going to make a spaceship to travel for any length of time if we can't keep our own stuff contained on our own planet? We have a whole planet. And if we can't take care of a planet, how are we going to take care of a spaceship? <laughs> how are we going to transform another planet if we can't take care, of, take care of our planet? Like, there's, like, common sense steps here. But if you're a billionaire, you're dumb. <laughs> if, when you're, if you're a billionaire, you're cut off from humanity, like, necessarily. Because you cannot become a billionaire unless you're cut off from humans. Because your existence as a billionaire is predicated on the existence of suffering in other humans. How many homeless people does it take to make one Elon Musk? I'm just talking the real talk here in the United States, right? Here's what's up. That, that, like, I'm not sugarcoating it. <laughs> like, come talk to me. <laughs> I'm not joking here. I will tell you what's up. Because... Yeah, that same cabal that wants things to stay the same are also the same cabal that's dividing the people and confusing them so that one half is attacking the other half. The number one danger of rich white men is democracy. The number one weapon that regular people have is the vote. <laughs> Like white rich men are terrified of democracy because, because there's two different ways of looking at the, uh, the world. You either concentrate wealth and power or you disperse wealth and power into the people. So you either concentrate wealth and power or you disperse wealth and power. There's just two ways. That's it. There's no way around it. The middle way, the middle path, the middle in between concentrate wealth and power and disperse wealth and power, the middle path is concentrate a little bit of wealth and power. The problem with the middle path is that if you concentrate a little bit, if you give a little bit, it goes all the way. It'll go all the way. It's game over for you. You can't do that. It's no good. So you have to choose. You either concentrate the wealth and power into the hands of the few, which creates a pyramid-shaped society, or you diffuse to your, um, or you diffuse it, uh, station. Okay, continue. What am I writing here? Okay. I don't know what I just did. Click on the i on the dot 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 icon next to the comments to see publishing options. Okay, well it doesn't even come up. I guess it'll come up when I come when it comes up. 
All right. So anyways, Facebook all trying to like, like get me on their side. The problem is like no one watches me on any any platform. So I don't know like if I if I'm blackballed or what. <laughs> For real, I don't know what happened. Like, should I create a brand new persona and start over? Dude, I don't want to do that. I mean, I guess I could, but like, shit. <laughs> that 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 would be like awful. I've had this for like literally ever. So yeah, if you're ever interested in like what's actually going on in my Minecraft world, I will show you. I don't want to build anything brand new because I'm going to delete chunks when the 1.17 update comes along. The 1.17 update is going to be rad because it's going to it's going to hook us up. It's going to hook me up with um uh mountains and deeper deeps and so but the problem is all the chunks that where i've already explored will not regenerate so that's why i built everything on a tiny island i can save the tiny island and delete all the other chunks and have a brand new world to explore and regenerate but in the meantime i like i built a lot of stuff in a little bit of area so let me sh give you a visual representation of what i'm talking about right so what happens what happens when you concentrate wealth and power? So this is this is the way wealth, the distribution of wealth in the United States in 2016. I divided it into quintiles. One, two, three, four, five. The bottom, the poorest, and the richest. Okay. Um, each block is 5% of the total wealth. So there are a total of 20 blocks. That's 100% of the wealth of the United States. One wall, so one block is 5%. One wall is half a block, which is 2.5%. And a stick is less than 2.5%. If you check out the wealth distribution in the United States, it looks like this. That is to say the bottom have absolutely no wealth. The next quintile, have very, very little wealth, less than 2.5%. The, the middle class has about 2.5% of the total wealth of the United States. The, the, the four-fifths, the, the top uh, percent, oh, I got to not talk to you right now, Mom. But here, how do I reject for the moment? Yeah, okay. So the, so the, like the, the well-off have about five five maybe 8% with all that, right? All that together. And then the top 20% have 18 blocks of wealth. That's what your wealth distribution looks like, right? The United States. So when your wealth distribution looks like this, when all the wealth is at the top, all the wealth is at the top, you have to understand wealth equals power, right? Wealth equals money equals power. So, all the power is at the top, concentrated at the top, all of it. And the bottom half have like no power or wealth whatsoever. So you come over here and you look, this is the law, right? This is the rule of law, the law right there. I'm going to stand on the law. Now, when you have a shape, a distribution of wealth like that and power like that, your, the shape of your society is going to look like this. That is to say, you're going to have a lot of people at the bottom of the, the pyramid who have no wealth and no power, and they are below the law. They are under the law. They must follow the law. But you're going to have a few people at the top who have so much wealth and power that they are above the law, you see? So the shape of your society becomes a pyramid. And then you have some people who are so low that they are underground. That means the law will never, never, never protect them. It will never protect them. It will only hurt them. The law, they can't ask the law 
They can't go to the law and say, hey, law, I got wronged. Why don't you go get them? It's like you, they can't go to the police and say, hey, police, go get them for doing something to me. Because they are so low in this society that they are underground. That the law pushes them down. That's what this kind of distribution of wealth does, right? That's what this does. What you want to happen is everyone to be equal before the law. Everyone the same before the law. It doesn't matter if you're a rich CEO. It doesn't matter if you're gay. It doesn't matter if you're transsexual. It doesn't matter if you're a woman. It doesn't matter if you're old, if you're young. It doesn't matter if you're non-binary. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're black or, or Asian or white or Mexican or Latino or Hungarian or or Middle Eastern, like Syrian, or or Iraqi, uh, or 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 uh, Pakistani. It doesn't Pakistani. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Everyone is the same before the law. That is the point. That is the point. This is the ideal that we all want, right? So if we want this ideal, if this is what we want, what we need to do is to change this, and the way we change this is we change this. All right. We change the distribution of power and wealth. All right. We need to take all this wealth and shove it back down into the bottom and distribute it more equally. When you distribute it more equally, it'll look closer to this. All right. So this is a little more fair. This is a little more fair. The poorest people... They don't have nothing, they have 5%, which is better than what the middle class has under, under currently. <laughs> all right. I, and then if you want to go all the way, all the way, then what you got here is everyone has the same. And that, you know, that would be a perfect distribution of wealth where there is no top percent because there is no rich, because there is no poor. Everyone's the same materially. There will still be differences in talent, in, in, in willpower, in spirit, in fortitude. There will still be differences, right? You will still have people who can run faster, who can paint better, who can sing better, who can rap better. You will still have that. But you, but you will not judge humans based on how much money they have, how much wealth do they have, you know, what does their house look like, who cares, right? Everyone has a house, everyone has health care, everyone has transportation, everyone is taken care of. The material does not matter. It does not matter. When humans realize that and organize their society so that material it reflects the fact that material does not matter because we are all the same right materially we are all the same so we should all materially take care of each other the same right and we should focus on those things that matter like art like expression like how fast can you run how far can you throw that javelin how good can you paint how good can you weave like all those things like Human expression. What are, the, what are the things you love to do and then show me? Right? 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 That's, that's what feeds the human spirit. And that's what we want to do. We want to feed the human spirit. To do that, we need a balance. A big balance. Because part of the problem is that we're destroying our environment. Why are we destroying our environment? Because it's beneficial to these people up here. That's why. So... Oh, hold on, let me see what's going on here. Okay. So, let me continue on. Well, then, what's the deal, then? What's the deal? Why Why are we this and not this? What's the deal? Okay, I'll show you, right? Here's a machine. This machine simulates our current system. Our current understanding. The way we understand the world is that you are born into the world. With nothing, right? Like all humans are, with nothing. And then your family bestows upon you 
the things that they have, right? Because you're a baby. So you have what they have pretty much. So understanding that the world is built like this, that people, some people have nothing, another group have very little, and actually when you get down to it, like most people have almost nothing. It's all the top. When you understand that, that your family can't give you a whole bunch, because <laughs> like when you roll the dice, right, the chances of you getting, getting a one out of six you know, of rolling a six when you roll the one a uh, six-sided dice, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so likely your family is not going to be able to give you a whole lot. So, your relation is that you're going to be born into a world where you own nothing and everything else is taken, and that you're faced with this machine, Pogokiro's Labor Capital Relations Simulator. So what you do is you insert 64 cobblestone and you receive one emerald block. And I need to eat, right? Pretend like I'll have, like if since I'm born into the world, I'll have nothing. Like I, I'm using like a great pickaxe right now and I have all this armor and stuff and I have this food, but actually I would have nothing if I were born in the world. So I would have to use my life energy to go to the to nature and transform nature in in into something that the machine wants. Yes, yes, you following me right now so far? I have I have to use my energy, my life energy to go to nature and change it into something that I can change, I can work with the machine so that I can talk to the machine and the machine will give me an emerald. Or emerald block, and 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 in, in this case, emerald block equals money, right? Because I have no money, no nothing. So I go to this machine. I'm like, okay, I got my 64 cobblestone, right? It would normally take me a lot longer, but I have all these buffs. I throw in my thing, right? I throw in my money, or my my 64 cobblestone. The machine is processing. It's thinking about what I've done. And it's going to decide if I deserve to get an emerald block or not. I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty, I feel pretty good. I've done a good job. I deserve a block. There it is. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? It, it's, it's not here. Give me my block back. All right. So I get a block, right? So I, I use my life energy to transform the natural world <clears throat> into a commodity that I give to my employer. And then my employer gives me a paycheck in the form of emerald block. Then I go to the machine, right? Look at my machine. It's, it's, a, it's a big pyramid. And I, I'm at the bottom. And I stick in my, my, my money and I press the button, and I get a I get a potato. I get a small potato. The money moves up into society, up and up and up and up. Right? It money always moves up, up into society, until it goes up into the stratosphere, into the rich, where they keep it. Right? The rich are sitting on top of a ton of money, and that's all they do with it. They just sit on all that money. That's all I do is I spend my life to transform nature into something called a commodity that I can give to my employer. And then my employer would take that commodity and give me a paycheck, which I put into the machine. And then that machine sends it to the very, very, very top, to the richest people. And all I get is potato. And the rich people control the whole world. That is the nature of, of reality for me. I'm born into this world. And this is what it does. This, this is how I relate to it. 
may, maybe the natural world that I transform is a McDonald's, right? Maybe the natural world that I transform is, is a grocery store where I'm a cashier or a stalker. Maybe the natural world that I transform into commodity is an office where I take phone calls. In any case, it's the natural world. It's not my world. I don't own any of it. It's the world they push me into. I was born into this world, and that's what I have to do. I have to take this stuff over here and do something to it over here to get this emerald block that I shove into a machine that concentrates it at the very, very top, and I get a tiny potato out of it. Just enough for me to do it again tomorrow. And all that money goes up to be concentrated at the top. That leads, that relationship leads to this kind of distribution of wealth. Where the bottom has nothing and the richest have everything. What is the solution to this? How do you get around this? What do we do? Let me tell you. You have to understand that the world is comprised of something more than simply what you can perceive with your five senses. There are colors that are real, that exist, that your eyes cannot see. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not real. So the first step is understanding that there exists a world beyond your five senses. There exists a world beyond that which you can perceive. You have to understand that. Like, I don't know, is it, is it really that hard to, to, to grasp that a world exists beyond that which you can perceive? And that world is real. It's real. Regardless of your, in a, of your ability to perceive it, it's real. So, that's where, I, that's where I introduce you to Plato. Plato's a, a, a Greek guy of what, like 300 AD, 500 AD? I forget when around. I think it was like 300 AD. It was after the Golden Age of Greece, a long time after the Golden Age of Greece, when Plato came around. And he talks about his teacher, Socrates. But Socrates never wrote anything down. So the only way we know about Socrates is what Plato says about Socrates. <laughs> Which makes people wonder, did Socrates really exist? Or did so was just Socrates just somebody that that Plato invented, so Socrates so Plato could argue against? I don't know. But Plato, like I don't know. I'm not like a super philosophy person, but I think I dig this stuff, and I, I think it's like central, because Plato divided the world into two: the world you could perceive, and the other world, the real world which he called the world of forms, but really we could call it the world of ideas. He thought the world of ideas was more real than the world of appearances. And for him, in the world of ideas, the things that live in the world of ideas are perfect, timeless, immutable. They never change. They are absolute perfection absolute perfection and they will never ever change never degrade never grow old and die never ever 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 they're perfect they are perfect but 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 they live in the world of ideas not in the material world out here right you know the the, the material stuff with our five senses like you can't grasp the idea with the five senses. You can't do it. You gotta use something else, your, your brain, your mind, right? 
You can't use your five senses to get the idea. You have to see it with your mind. Okay, okay, so you follow me? So, all right. So, so fine, fine. You use your mind to, to look, to look into this world of ideas where everything is perfect, according to Plato, and everything is timeless. And you look at it, you're like, yeah, all right. And you, here, just give me, give me an idea, right? Just give me an idea. Uh, something very, very simple. Uh, chair. 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 You know what a chair is, right? Everyone knows what a chair is. Everybody knows a chair. Everybody knows a chair. Okay. So, think of chair, but what you but 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 the chair that I'm talking about is an idea, right? You can like you can perceive it with your mind's eye, the idea that I speak of, of which I speak. But but like, you know, that's one thing. The other thing is to take that that idea and drag it across an, a divide. What is that divide? What is this divide I talk about? You have to reach across the divide and grasp the idea. Here, this way. You have to reach across the divide, grasp the idea, and then drag it across the divide again. <laughs> Alright, and then you have to take the idea and grasp it and drag it across. Alright, what is the thing you, gra- you drag it across? You drag it across um, the, the, the film of, of materialism, right? You take the idea and you make it real. <laughs> you take the idea... You grab it and you drag it across the barrier that separates ideas from re- from material. So, so you have this idea of chair. You grab it. You drag it across. It goes, and the thing you have in your hand is the material expression of that idea. The idea of chair is still there. It didn't go anywhere. It is still perfect. It is still timeless. It is still unchanging. It is there. All you've done is taken a, like a copy of it, I guess, and dragged it across the barrier from idea into the material and given material expression. So watch like this. Ta-da! I have made a chair. I have made a chair. I can I can like sit here. So here, here, here. There I there I am. Here's my chair. Uh, uh. Sit in my chair. I'm sitting in my chair. I'm I'm sitting in it. I swear to God, I'm sitting in it. Sitting in my chair. Sitting sitting on the sofa. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Right. My, my butt's on the sofa here. How, how do I? Here. There we go, right? See? Butt on sofa. Not on sofa, butt on sofa, right? Butt on chair. There. I have made chair. That is a chair. This is a chair. But just because I took chair and the idea of chair and dragged it across the material realm doesn't mean that chair is gone. The idea of chair is still there. All I've done is I've taken it the, the, and given it expression. And this is only one possible, one possibility. This could be chair. That's a chair. I mean, it's a crappy chair, but it's a chair, right? Like, look, look, at uh. What a shitty chair. What a crappy chair. Ah, oh, but it's a chair, right? It works, it works. Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So, understand that the world of ideas is 
is like legit. It's real. It's real. It's just as real as this material world. It's just real in a different way. It's real beyond the five senses way. And yet, they influence the five senses way. Makes them pretty real, right? So you come over here. These are our ideas. Liberty and justice. Liberty and justice. These are ideas. In the old school way, you could call them goddesses. If you want to be old school. Because that's what really, the Greeks, they had gods and goddesses, lots of them. But really, all the gods and goddesses were, were personifications of ideas, ideals. You took an ideal and you made it a person. That's all you did. <laughs> I mean, like, be real about it, right? If you want to be real about it, justice, the name of justice, according to Hesiod, is DK. <laughs> the name of victory, according to the ancient Greeks, is called Nike. But you might know the goddess of victory by another name, Nike. You know, by a shoe? <laughs> is it? It's so funny. It's so funny. All right. So, Americans are special people, right? This is this is there's a reason why Americans are special people, right? We have this stupid concept, American exceptionalism, that Americans are exceptional. There's one reason why we would be exceptional. There's only one reason why we would be exceptional, because we as a people have decided that the material is irrelevant. That a number of the things that were used to divide human beings from one another were irrelevant. Because all those human beings with all these superficial divisions all have the same vision upon the same ideal. And with that shared vision, they are able to coordinate their activities to create a greater good. That is why Americans are amazing people. That is why America, the United States, is an amazing, amazing invention. Because it was the very, very first in modern times to actually try to incorporate the ideas of liberty and justice into a form of government and bring them into existence. That is why the United States is fantastic. That is why. Look at this skeleton come out of nowhere trying to ruin my, 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 uh, my story. You're not going to do it, skeleton. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. I'm on a mission. So, Americans are, are exceptional for the sole reason that they are, they are willing to, to sacrifice a great deal to give expression to the ideals of both liberty and justice in the form of their government. And the way they do that is they diffuse power and wealth into the people. That is the thing that changes Americans from all other parts of history. That is why Americans are great. That is why we are great. If Americans fail to live up to that heritage, then they have failed, they have failed to live up to the heritage. <laughs> right? What are you going to do? But the point is that Americans are great people because they live up to this heritage. So, they perceive the ideal of liberty. They perceive the ideal of justice. And the thing that they drag across the barrier is, temp is, is perceived by truth. That is the judge. It's not the Americans who are a judge. It's not the Americans who are the judge. It's, it's truth. Truth is the judge. Truth is an aspect of God. You know how humans like to give human form to ideas? Well, there you go. God is the human, one of the human, 
just so God literally, I mean, I wouldn't say literally, but God, you can look at God as a jewel. And humans are incapable of, of perceiving or even conceiving of the entirety of the jewel at once. Can't do it. Humans, your brain, your human brain cannot do it. Lo siento. <laughs> but humans can appreciate aspects of God. Humans can appreciate facets of that jewel. If humans can't appreciate the whole jewel at once, because, you know, God is, you know, like pretty awesome, right? <laughs> no wonder, right? You're a mere mortal. <laughs> like, no, it, like, it's okay, little human. <laughs> You're a mere mortal. <laughs> Your little tiny brain can't handle it. It's cool. <laughs> but we can perceive aspects just like we we can perceive facets of a jewel we can't look at the whole jewel but we can look at a facet of the jewel like one at a time right we can do that we, we our little our little monkey brains can handle that and an aspect of god an aspect of the jewel a facet of the jewel is truth um so is liberty and justice but you know so but but truth is that which is so it's a particularly important aspect because it's that which is. That includes the part which is dragged across into the material from the, from the ideal. So there's a way, if, if you recall, this infernal machine whereby you humans... Weak humans, humans who have nothing, humans who own nothing, are compelled by the machine to use their, 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 their life energy to transform the natural world from the natural world into a commodity that the machine will accept. And then the humans transform that commodity into currency, which is, you know, concentrated at the top. So the loop is a feedback. You destroy the natural world for the benefit of, of the rich and not for, for the laborers who actually do it, who actually perform the work. So Americans are special people because they are able to perceive liberty and justice tempered by truth, right here, right, tempered by the truth, Truth, liberty, and justice. That's what Americans are about. And they constructed a form of government that would give expression to these ideals. And when you do that, when you raise liberty and justice as perceived by truth so that it is actually true, that is liberty and justice that you're lifting up, you create a circuit, you create energy. And that energy you can draw you can draw a line from. And what that does <laughs> Oh what happened? Dude, Duder. I see a bad moon rising. No, this is a I had a repeater here. Where did this repeater come from? This guy wants to be powered, but he's not. So let me power him. Let me give you power. Oh, yes. Okay, there we go. So then what do you do? When you raise liberty and justice... As tempered by, you know, liberty tempered by justice as perceived by truth, what you do is you create this kind of system. The wealth you put into the system flows through the system via the velocity of money. And instead of flowing to the top where all that wealth is taken out of the system, Instead of that happening, instead of that happening, what happens instead is it is stopped by a tax on wealth. 
and a, a, a financial transaction tax on stock trades and a progressive marginal tax. So that stops the wealth from going up into this pool of, of wealth that leaves the system. Instead of the wealth leaving the system, it is pushed out. It is shunted away. It is shunted away from the system. Where is it put? It is put over here. Oh, I can't see it. To social programs, Medicare for everyone, free education. You build infrastructure such as uh, internet and, and train lines and subways and buses and autonomous uh, car networks and, and truck networks to deliver goods uh, without uh, humans to stop traffic fatalities and switch to uh, all electric uh, grid. Like you socialize the wealth basically. So you're shoving the wealth back down. And then what you want to do is you want to treat the wealth, you want to treat the society like organic farming. And what is the number one rule of organic farming? You feed the soil, not the plant. So how do you do that under in a society? Through universal basic income. By giving money directly to people, you give them the freedom to not only spend the money the way they need to, to spend it, but you also reduce all the overhead required to oversee how they spend their money. So you make it more efficient on both ends. It's just better that way. It's just better. You give money to the poorest people. You just give money to the poorest people. That's the best way to help poor people. If your goal is to help poor people, the number one way to help poor people is to give them money. I'm not, I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. You can check all the studies you want, and they will all say the same thing. The number one way to help poor people is give them money. Oh, my God. But wait a minute, Pogo Kiro. If you give... If, if you give enough money to enough poor people, they won't be poor anymore. Right. Right. Right, 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 right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't handle it, right? God. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. It's so obvious. It's so obvious. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible for people to understand how obvious it is. You don't need a billion, billion, billion dollars. You don't need it. You don't need it. Because to make that billion, billion, billion dollars, necessarily, you have to have millions of poor people, millions of suffering, millions of homeless, necessarily. This will stop it. This will stop it. Look it. Give people money. Give people money. Universal basic income. Through through the U.S. Postal Service. Yes. Japan does the same thing. It has its own uh, postal system. And it also has banks through the postal system. That means rural areas have access to not only postal systems, but also to banking. The poorest people get access to banking. So if you want to do something crazy, like give people stimulus, a stimulus check, instead of burdening the IRS with it, which it's not designed to do, instead of doing that, <laughs> you, you hand out checks through the postal system, through the social security, through a bureau that's designed to do exactly that. Holy crap, dude. Hire me. Hire me. Hire me for, for, for the government, for like a big government job. I'm serious. Look at this. Come on. Come on. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Right? By doing this, you, you, not only do you deliver checks to the poorest people the most efficient manner possible, but you also save the postal system. And you develop rural areas, develop rural America. 
is which is what you want to do. Oh God. Oh my God. I can't believe it. Give me a job, right? Give me a job. Holy crap. Hire me. So, by giving money to the poorest people, they themselves will develop the networks and 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 the systems to feed the plant, just like un with organic farming, right? Organic farming understands that, that the life is in the soil. If you feed the microbes and the fungi in the soil, they will create a medium that delivers the nutrients to the roots of the plants. So the plants will grow the happiest that they've ever, 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 ever been. You feed the soil. The soil is, is the thing that does the work. It's not the plant, it's the soil that does the work. And when you, when you have happy soil, you will have a happy plant. And by doing that, you naturally transform this monstrosity into this thing and eventually to this thing. Where it does not matter the material conditions, it's your spirit. It's, your, it's the ideal that matters. And that is how you become an American. And by doing all of this, you move away from this atrocity of white supremacy and, and fascism and to this beautiful democracy, human rights, rule of law. This is where Americans want to go. This is where we want to go. If you are against this, you are my enemy. And Nazis are my enemy. Republicans are my enemy. They want this. Nazis and Republicans want this. Trump supporters want this. I want this. That's the deal, right? Pogokiro stands for this. This is what's up. Right? We're going to we're going to lift up truth, liberty, liberty and justice. Liberty and justice. We're going to lift up liberty and justice. It's going to be observed by truth. And see, oh yeah, it's true that they're lifting up liberty and justice. And by doing so, we're going to transform society. And by doing, by transform, transforming society, we're going to save the, the, the world. Because that's what we need to do. Climate change is the, is the number, one, number one bad guy. But before we can get to climate change, we have to defeat fascism. This is how we do it. If you got questions, let me know. There I go. Pogokiro out. Peace.